Hey guys and gals, it's me George, the Shade Tree Railroad Man. And we're going to do a little bit of artist work today. We're going to do some painting on the backdrop. And as you can see, I've already been doing some. And uh, but we're going to do some more. And I think I had mentioned in my last video update on the layout that uh, one of the things that I do, and this is not a tutorial because I am not an artist. Uh, I, the backdrop that I did last year, which is right behind me, and let me swing around here. This backdrop here is the first one that I have ever done. And uh, it came out pretty good. I was pretty pretty satisfied with it, but you know you can never be satisfied too much and you're always wanting to be improving on what you've done and learning more and this was all trial and error um, I did have pictures that I used for inspiration and I did a lot of looking at pictures of mountains and different techniques that different artists used and got some books from the library and I did a lot of investigation, a lot of research and uh, but I'm gonna give you the benefit of some of my research and uh, uh, right off the bat I gotta tell you I've probably forgotten half of what I did last year so uh, it's gonna be a learning experience all over again for me because I haven't done any of this since a year ago or more so, as I said in my last video, uh, the first thing that I like to do, and I learned this by trial and error, is I like to do the furthest back mountains, the ones that go back the farthest in our viewpoint. And uh, the reason for that is you don't have to be too careful with it because when you paint those, the foreground mountains are going to get painted over them so the lines don't have to be perfect along the intersecting edges and to give you an illustration of the point you'll see here I have a mountain way in the back right in there it's barely visible and then I have my darker black mountains that are further back and you can't see as much detail on those as you can in the ones in the foreground. And of course the closer you get to your actual perspective you get more detail. And I intend to be adding more of these trees and bushes uh, on both sides of the backdrop on this side as well as the side that we're going to be doing now um, to tie it in with our scenery on the layout itself. So we're interested in that mountain right back in there. And that mountain right back in there actually is one of the first ones I painted when I was doing this. And uh, then I realized that I was making, a, uh, making it hard for myself by thinking that I could do the front ones first and then adding the back ones in later and uh, so yeah and you can see another mistake I made up in here which I don't want you to repeat can you see that you can see the outline of that mountain through the clouds that's a mistake I used a black marker up in there to do my outlining to follow don't want to do that because it bleeds through the paint that we're using. Okay, so of course if you're going to do painting you got to have paint, right? Absolutely. So here's my lineup of paint. I don't use anything expensive. Uh, the most expensive thing I have there is that modeling paste and we probably could even get away with using some plaster patching compound I'm thinking 
uh, and I'll show you what we'll do with the modeling paste later on. And that was relatively expensive. I think that was $9 uh, at Hobby Lobby. And in fact, I think the tag is right on there still, yeah. $8.99 Hobby Lobby. But you'll find that that's very handy. The rest of these things, I'm not sure, the rest of these paints all came from Walmart. And many of them are 50 or 60 cents. Some of them are 75. Of course, the larger one right here, this one is also from Hobby Lobby. That was $2.99. But what I do is uh, I price it and get it wherever it's the cheapest. I have a lineup of the brushes. And these are none of these are expensive brushes either. In fact, some of them are real cheapies you can buy for like 25 cents a piece. The best way to buy brushes for this kind of stuff, and all of the paints we're using are water-based, by the way, uh, you can buy these in packs. You can buy a whole pack of brushes, and sometimes they have sponges in them and so forth, um, for about $5, I think. So save your pennies and save your dimes. And, of course, you might already have some of these brushes. But the round one is... Uh, not usual to a model guy like me and the wider ones. The one on the far right, that's just a cheapy paintbrush that probably costs a, a buck and a half or two bucks. And then uh, after I got going on doing my backdrop, I decided that I was going to use that modeling paste. And to use the modeling paste, you're going to want these spatulas. And uh, again, this is a set you can buy them that are fancy metal and all of that kind of stuff. But this is a plastic set. I think it came from Walmart and it was like five bucks. So you're going to want that because the reason we use that and the modeling paste is to get texture on your mountain. You put in the texture with the black paint using the spatula and as it dries you can... Uh, work it and get more variations in it and then once the black paint has dried then you can do bright dry brushing over it to bring out the details so it gives you an idea of uh, rock face and so forth details on the mountainside you know what I'm saying details on the mountainside see the texturing in there yeah and that helps out to bring out the realism and notice how I have an angled piece across the corner. I used that angled piece and worked it into my mountain so that it became part of the crevasse in that mountain. Yeah. So you get to work with things. And I'm going to have a similar situation over here where I have this seam and I just filled it in today. I had done the painting of these background mountains last night and realize that that hadn't been filled in very well. So I'll have to retouch the blue sky above. But that's not a problem either. Touch-ups are easy to do. And, of course, one of the benefits of having a mirror is that you get a mountain peak with only painting half of it. So, Let's get down to it. We're going to paint this one right in here. This one right here. It's almost completely covered by that cloud. And I did these clouds last year when I was doing clouds. Went all the way around before I painted any mountains. When I just had blue backdrop. And then I started doing mountains afterwards, and so we'll have to do some of the clouds over again, which is no big deal again. I'll show you how I do those in a couple of different ways. And the last thing I want to point out before we get started is this down here is not final. All that is is the leftover paints from when I was painting these mountains here. Okay, instead of just letting them dry up and throw them away, I applied it on here and it gives me a background, some base for it to work with. All right, so let me uh, get my camera set up here and hopefully I can do this without getting in your way too much. <laughs> 